style of the sun, you can cook a three pound chicken in about an hour and a half. Or you can take a frozen chicken, you can put it in here early in the morning, set the oven facing south, leave for today, come back at supper and have a cooked roast. And so it gets up to temperatures as high as 400 degrees. Um, Trabao will be baking bread and making beans and rice and just serving different samples, but you can cook anything other than fried foods with it. And the amazing thing is nothing burns and nothing dries out when you cook in the sun. It's the most forgiving method of cooking that you'll ever find. And in addition to cooking in it, you can also use it as a solar dehydrator. When we cook in it, we latch these latches shut. It forms an airtight seal and traps the air inside. But if you turn one of these latches inward, set the glass on top of it, that leaves a gap of air and then you're able to use it as a dryer dehydrator. Part of the package that comes with the here comes with dehydrating racks so that there's three racks and a roll of parchment paper and you can do multiple levels of drying with it. Do you ever get fresh eggs? Well, one of the things, chickens, yes. Okay, well the thing you would love about the sun oven is hard boiled eggs. You can make hard boiled eggs and here you don't even use water. We raise chickens and I've taken eggs within 20 minutes of dropping out of the chicken hard boiled in the sun oven and they will peel instantly membrane that builds up between the egg shell and the egg white completely disappears. And you put a whole bunch of eggs in a pot and you put them in here, anywhere they touch each other you get brown spots on the white of the eggs. But if you take cardboard egg cartons and you rip the lids off, you can do two dozen eggs in here at a time and you'll keep them separated, you don't get any spots. And it takes about an hour to do two dozen eggs, but you don't have to date your eggs if you want to boil them. You can just boil them without the water and they'll peel instantly. So Two questions. Mm -hmm. Does it matter which side is up, the big end or the small end? And the eggs, no. Okay. And then do you need to put them directly into cold water? No, you do not you do need to put them in cold water. If you just take and you do the eggs in here and then um, just let them cool and they'll be ready to, to, to peel and you don't have to put them in cold water. No. What I do is I'll put two. I'll preheat the sun. I'm put two dozen eggs in for an hour. After an hour, I open it using an oven mitt. I'll take one out and spin it on a table. If you ever spun a hard boiled egg, but if you spin one, it spins nice and evenly like a top. If you take a soft boiled egg and you spin it, it's real wobbly. Well, if it's still wobbly, I put it back in for another 15 minutes. Okay. But the uh, it's just amazing uh, with that. But the the taste, like if you take a whole chicken, you can throw a chicken in here, throw potatoes, carrots, onions in the pot with it, and um, you'll just put it in, and you'll the, the juice from the chicken. You don't have to have any moisture to it. The juice from the chicken will cook everything else in the pot, and you have one pot to wash. And from a lifestyle standpoint, it's great because if you want to, let's say it's one in the afternoon, you know, you want to eat at five. You can just put your meal in here, set it where the sun's going to be at 3 o'clock, come back at 5 and have a book throw. Cool. And can you show us the sun alignment tool um, on there? In this sun, I don't know. Um, I but maybe just the concept? <laughs> yeah. I can show you the picture of it. Um, the, uh, the, there's these two handles, and when the sun shines through the top hole and is centered over the bottom hole, then you know it's lined with the sun. The reason there's two is that... Um, this one, if you're standing on the ground and standing behind it, you can see it. This one, if you were, had it on a table, you would be able to see it from the side. Okay. And um, it does come with um, stakes, so it be staked into the ground um, to keep it from blowing over. Now I've got these, well, when I had them set up, I had them, I just took a bungee cord and put it where the stakes are, because on the asphalt here I can't, you know, couldn't use them. But it's got a notch in it that will keep it from, um, if you're... If it's windy, if you just take this thumb screw and you turn it and turn it like this, then you're able to, okay. um, it locks it in place. These will flap a little bit in the wind, but it really doesn't make any difference. Okay. And there's a package here, normally the sun oven with what we call the dehydrating preparedness package. Um, sells for $3.99 on our website. Here we're selling it for $2.99 and we're also including a, a plastic cover so that if you wanted to store it outside, if you had a tiny house, you could store it outside and you could then have a way of doing it. That's a $30 value. So here it's $2.99, that includes the sales tax, it includes the sun oven, it includes the... These are the hydrating racks so that you can, they come with the parchment paper. It also comes with stackable pots. These pots are, pots are designed so right on the leveling rack you can cook two different things at the same time and they have interchangeable lids. It's a glass lid and a dome lid and you're able to, you know, interchange uh, whichever way you want it. There's actually enough room in the sun oven so you can cook 
in these two pots and then take two quart sized mason jars and put it next to it and cook side dishes. So you can cook mm. four things at the same time. It comes nice. with a set of bread pans and it comes with a water pasteurization indicator. It comes with steaks so that you can stake it into the ground. It also comes with a computer CD that's got 600 recipes on it that will allow you to um, it's a state of the art recipe software called Cookin'. And What's neat about the cooking software is that if our recipe is for four and you want to cook for seven, you just change the number of servings and it adjusts every ingredient. You can sort by anything you want to include or exclude. Okay, awesome. Mm -hmm. So it's not temperature dependent, it's light dependent? It's light, exactly. It's okay. the, you have to have enough sun to cast a shadow. If it's overcast to the point as it was much of the afternoon today where you didn't see any a shadow, then you couldn't cook in it. But if it's um, as long as you have enough sun to cast a shadow, you can cook. I've cooked in temperatures as low as 10 below. We send a number of them to Antarctica where they use them for six months and cook in temperatures that were most of the time about 40 below zero. And so the outside temperature isn't an issue at all. Okay. So, like, say for example, for a chicken, approximately how long to cook it and how many times would someone most likely have to turn it? Okay. It, if, if, if you want it to cook as fast as possible, you could cook a three pound chicken in an hour and a half by turning it twice, preheating it, turning it twice during that time. Or you could put the chicken in early in the morning, frozen, just set it facing south, leave for the day and come back at supper and have a cook for us. So you could slow cook all day if you chose to, um, or if you, by realigning it every 30 minutes, then your cooking time's only 15 minutes longer than it would normally be in your oven for each time you open the door you had 15 minutes on to the cooking time. Okay and can food burn? Food does not burn and it doesn't dry out. The reason food doesn't burn is that when we have food inside the pot the whole chamber is the same temperature so when we have food inside the pot the pot itself the food inside the pot the air around the pot is all exactly the same temperature so there's no point that the pot's hotter than the food. So if you think about your stove burner where you're transferring the heat from the stove burner in a pot, the pot's always hotter than the food. So if you don't stir it, then it burns. Um, and here you don't have to worry about that because the pot never gets hotter than the food. And when you latch the latch shut, it's got an airtight seal so nothing dries out. So when you make roasts that are really moist, your bread has an incredible taste or texture because you know it doesn't dry out the food either. Awesome. So when you make the bread, does it have to be in the bread loaf pans you there? You can use any can... kind of a bread pan. You choose. Okay. Or you could make, I mean, a lot of people will make like sourdough breads and things in the round pan, but um, the, this size pan, you can use any 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 pot or pan that's oven safe can be used in the sun oven. Um, the difference is that the thicker the pot, the longer it takes for it to cook because of the even heat. So if, for example, when I go back to the illustration of the chicken, if I was going to slow cook the chicken all day, if I was going to leave it unattended, then I prefer using a Dutch oven. A Dutch oven takes an hour and a half longer to come up to temperature than like the enamelware pot will, but the advantage of the Dutch oven for slow cooking is if you're leaving food unattended all day, once the Dutch oven has gotten up to temperature, if the sun completely disappears, if it starts raining, the retained heat from the Dutch oven inside the well insulated sun oven will allow the food to finish cooking. Mm -hmm. But if I was going to cook it as quickly as possible, then I'd use enamelware. Enamelware is like what your turkey roaster is made out of. It's a steel coated with enamel. It's thin and it's dark. And because it's thin, it doesn't take a lot of energy to, to heat the pot. And because it's dark, it absorbs. So this is best for, for cooking quickly. The only you, a lot of people like using corneware or Pyrex. You know, glassware works just fine. Glass worker where it takes about 15% um, longer to cook than a Namor pot. Well, it's most things you just start a few minutes early and it works uh, just fine. The only kind of pot or pan you want to be cautious of using is a shiny pot, like a stainless steel pot. That reflects light out. You can still use it, just take a dark dish towel, cover over the top of it so it doesn't reflect the light out, and then you can use a shiny pot as well. Oh, so over the top of the whole... Right. Everything oh. you cook in the sun oven, except bakery goods, you cook in a pot with a lid on it because right. of the airtight seal in the sun oven. If you cooked in an open pot, then the moisture that comes out of the pot would fog the inside of the glass and that would decrease the temperature in the sun oven. So you do cook in a pot with a lid on it and then so you just cover the pot lid on a shiny pot and that doesn't reflect the light out. You can use a shiny bread pan because the bread raises and you don't, uh, when the bread raises, you know, it covers over the shiny pot. Now when you do bake bread, 
there are two things you do differently than if you do it in your regular oven. Um, the most important thing is when you proof your bread, you don't raise it to the same height as you would if you grew in a conventional oven. When you proof the bread, you raise it to about a half to three quarters of an inch below the top of the bread pan. The reason for that is the even heat of the sun oven. Let's say I preheat the sun oven to 325 degrees, I put two loaves of bread in. Well, because everything equalizes temperature, the temperature is going to drop 50 to 75 degrees in the sun oven. That's going to gradually come back up. So if you've already proofed your bread to its normal height, when that temperature drops and then increases, there's a good chance your bread could over-raise and fall. But if you start with the bread just below the top of the bread pan, when the temperature drops and then comes back up, your bread will raise to just the right height. The other thing is if you keep a spray bottle and you spray a light mist of water on the dough just before putting it in, then your bread will brown. And um, mm -hmm. so you can brown the bread. Normally I can cook one loaf of bread in about 40, white, um, white bread or wheat bread, I can cook one loaf in about 45 minutes, two loaves in an hour, hour and 10 minutes. Um, but uh, there's times when it's partly cloudy and I've taken twice as long to cook it. And just to, it's a function of time, but it doesn't affect the quality of it at all. So it's the most forgiving way of cooking bread you'll ever find. Okay, and is the density of the bread different? The texture is, just feels lighter, but it's really not, it, it, I mean, it's a, not much density difference. I mean, it just, okay. it, it, it's got a really nice taste and texture to it. You know? Okay, awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, um, what's your name again? Paul. Paul, Paul. Paul. and you're the owner of? Uh, I'm the president of Sun Ovens International. I've been awesome. The for the last 19 years, so. Wonderful. Well, thank you oh, so thanks, much. Thanks. Stop by. If you're going to be around tomorrow, we're doing a class on how to cook in the sun at one o'clock at the stage inside. So. Okay. Very nice. Thank you. Okay.